Steve is the founder of SK Motorsport and an expert in becoming a successful business owner. In today's ever-changing business landscape, Steve knew it was all about persistence and adaptation. In today's episode, we're gonna be talking to this local business legend. Stick around to see exactly what steps Steve took to create a successful company. I mean, I attribute our success to my employees. I mean, yeah. they're, you, know, you gotta have the right people in place. Yeah. What really helps a shop owner or a business owner is if you have your business in order and you have things in place, you have systems in place, uh, that attracts good people. You know, they want to work for people that are organized, they want to work for people that are productive. You know, you have to take the mindset that you're going to do whatever it takes to be successful. You know, it's yep. uh, it, a lot of businesses fail early on and it's just one of those things that, uh, you know, when you realize that, that it's, nothing's going to be given to you, that you have to work super hard, twice as hard as anybody else, that, uh, you know, you got to just basically do whatever it's, it takes to, to get to the next level. You know, that's the number one rule is when it's, when it's slow, you got to promote. So you got to get out there and do whatever it takes, whether it's picking up the phone and, and calling customers you haven't heard from for a while, you still implement the things that work. Because if something works, you know, why change it? Before we go in and talk to this guy, guys, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below. Let's go. What's up, guys? Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Right. Sergi with Outflip TV. Awesome, nice yeah, to meet you. We're man. trying to get to Steve. Steve, looking for Steve? Yeah. This way. Sweet. Okay. Right through the door and up into the left. Yeah, all right. There's the man, the myth, the legend, Steve himself. Hey. How are you? Good, Sergi, how are you it's nice to meet you. How'd you get started in the business world in general? Like not even the, this shop yet. Mm -hmm. Like where were you as a youngin? Yeah, yeah, just kind of growing up, you know, I've, uh, Come, we'll call it genetics in a sense. I mean, my, yeah. my dad always had his own business, never really worked for anybody else. And mm. uh, from the time I was in high school, I was always wheeling and dealing and trying to, you know, sell something, whether it was at the swap meet or, you know, oh, some okay. other way. You know, I was always really, uh, you know, busy trying to make things happen, you know, what I call getting my hustle on, you know, that's kind, yeah, of, for sure. <laughs> kind of how it worked. But uh, yeah, that kind of started uh, back then. And then, you know, I always uh, had a customer service job where I was mm -hmm. talking to people and, oh, that's and uh, definitely, uh, you know, interacting and, and getting to know just that, that side of, uh, of the economy. And uh, I met a guy at uh, a mm -hmm. church that uh, had a business in, in Blaine that uh, he needed help with. Uh -huh. And we hit it off real well. And I ended yeah. up working for him for, um, about six years, so six or seven years. But uh, the cool thing about that business was that I um, interacted with, uh, all of our customers were mm -hmm. business owners. So they were all oh, right. Canadian business owners that uh, used our, our address for their for their business. So I was constantly interacting with them with uh, you know what they're doing every day and, yeah. and what works for them. And you get, you get to know people pretty well. So, okay. um, and one of, our, one of our customers there was uh, a Volkswagen performance shop mm -hmm. uh, up in Canada there. And uh, I kind of gravitated towards that, being a guy, I love cars yeah. and stuff. We've done a lot of work out here. This is uh, an existing shop before, so it was a uh, transmission uh, shop mm -hmm. for about 10 years, and it was uh, another auto repair shop for about 20 years. So I came in here probably about six months ago, and I just gutted the whole place basically yeah. so we've done uh, a lot of uh, remodeling getting room we made another bay here i lifted the office up about eight feet and uh created another wasn't place always there. this clean no it wasn't actually no. I, was, I, I can uh, expect with the transmission shop or some yeah, bolts and everything you know, everywhere I mean, essentially someone had been standing here for yeah. 30 years working yeah, on cars true, true. and when we first walked in here this floor was it was really gross it was built like this originally but it uh, -huh. uh you know, it had some out outdated siding on it and whatnot but it it kind of was a weird building, you know, yeah. just uh, it looked dated and it uh, just the shape of it was kind of strange. So, you know, I really uh, put a lot of thought and, and passion into the outside of this building. I can tell. I can tell. Um, <laughs> a lot of physical labor. I did most of the work myself. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so myself, you're not just an auto guy. And, and my son, yeah. Wow. Um, so it was, you know, I, I found these, these panels that uh, are popular now and I decided I was going to do the whole building in that. So the yeah. bottom half of the building was uh, what they call T111, which is an older wood. Uh -huh and uh, it was yellow, so the okay. building was yellow. Yeah. And there was signs all over the place from the old shop. So we went through and uh, 
painted these panels ahead of time and and then painted the trim ahead of time oh just before you put them on yeah which is yeah. a lot more labor intensive than what <laughs> get tell. yeah than what you normally would do because really? most people when they install that they're just going to paint over the top of it right and, right. and be done but uh, then we added all of the little the little rivets there to kind of give it that industrial yeah. look so Yeah, so this space is our customer waiting area, and this is um, a space that was really important to me because I know that our customers, um, you know, they, they, they kind of have a, a, an appreciation for, for our level of, of yeah. uh, professionalism. And originally, this room was was pretty run down. I mean, it was a you know, had been in Bef shop before for you guys came in yeah. and whatnot. So I, I really put a lot of time and effort into this room. We basically gutted the whole thing. So we had uh, a drop ceiling in here that was really old from the oh the ones the with 80s. like the tiles or whatever mm -hmm. on the roof yeah yeah and the yeah. fluorescent lights and, and all the heating was over here so then i, I basically gutted the whole thing yeah put, and rearranged the heating and put, moved the bathroom door over there we had to create kind of a flow for the mm -hmm. customers i right. wanted to make sure that they were comfortable in here yeah. you know it's a, um, a little bit smaller space than we had before but um you know building this wall here and then having the couch here kind of creates a little bit of space there and then some privacy for them walking into the bathroom. Oh yeah, I um, love which it. Is, which is really important. It's good, got a TV here going, yeah, some golf. TV going for them, <laughs> so they can stay entertained. Got Sweet. The, you know, yeah. battery or the phone chargers and. So you come in here and you just get this good feeling like you're not, you're not really out of auto shop. It's like these people are ready to care for you. I don't know, yeah. especially I like the wall color too. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a nice warm feeling. Yeah. You're not in here like, like for example, if I'm just a dude that has, or like a lady that has nothing to do with cars, she doesn't want to come into like a super dirty auto shop and be like looking for the owner to ask him where to go, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great, yeah, love it. Yeah, so it's all about comfort okay. and yeah. like said, just creating a great experience for For people. sure. And actually it started my love for cars when I was 17, my dad, bought a 65 Mustang that was completely done up. So I spent my oh, junior, senior yeah, year driving this yeah. <laughs> car that would oh, literally do burnouts cool down the road. High school, right? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that uh, kind of started the passion for cars. Yeah. Um, and then when I was working at the freight place, um, you know, learning about uh, different companies there, you know, one was the uh, Volkswagen and Audi uh, shop there. And they, um, you know, they, uh, they were doing, they were doing really well, it looked like to me. So. You know, I was doing all their yeah. shipping for them. All the parts were coming. You, you can know. tell they're doing good, right? Yeah, yeah. see, Mike. Yeah, you know. And uh, at the time, it was way back before the internet was around, so um, mm -hmm. things were were done in magazines and right. and whatnot. You do car shows, that kind of stuff, to to kind of move your product along. Um, but then I uh, started to realize that you know this is uh, something I could do potentially. Really? Okay. Um, I bought a car uh, and I ended up fixing it up. It was a '84 Volkswagen Rabbit that. I went crazy on. I mean, yeah. I did everything every kid wants to do. You know, I did the suspension, the brakes, the yeah. you know, the engine swap. I did the oh, whole nine yards, okay. and uh, that kind of really started the thing for me. And um, I was down here in Bellingham driving around one day, and uh, this guy pulled over on the side of the road. And, hey, let me check out your car. And, <laughs> oh, he pulled you over. Oh yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> and he's like, "Where'd you get all these parts?" And yeah. I'm like, "Oh, you know, I got yeah. a connection up in Canada. I can get stuff from." So uh, that kind of started it, honestly. Yeah. You know, I I, I kind of helped him spark, out, and right. yeah. So after that, I, I pretty much took over a section of the warehouse um, mm -hmm. where I was working, and we uh, started buying cars and parts. Oh and no way! So this guy, he had a warehouse of his own. Um, well, the place I worked had oh, a okay, warehouse. Oh okay, okay. Yeah. So then you got to be in charge of that section. Right? Yeah, okay. yeah. And my boss at the time, you know, he was like I said, really super cool with yeah. me, and he let me kind of do whatever I needed to do. Um, you know, during that journey with with, with him there, I, you know, there was some other things that I was learning to do as I was you know getting older about yeah. about business and. Um, was able to, you know, broker some pretty good um, jobs for myself that uh, I could I could start to see that um, I wanted to be self-employed. So I know absolutely nothing about cars, okay. basically. Yeah. Just I know they have an engine. So yeah. take me around the shop. Show me how, how everything works. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, we have right. what's called a workflow here. And okay. And, um, a customer comes to the front counter, they'll, they'll come in and, uh, or they'll call mm -hmm. and then uh, we'll, we'll take their keys and get their car dispatched yeah. out here to the shop. And um, you know, basically each technician has their own tablet and yeah. they um, okay. are dispatched the work via um, the tablet. Oh, okay. So, so it's kind of like a McDonald's. Someone set, places an order and they have like their little task or something, yeah. right? Yeah, it's, oh, all, okay. all in sequence, it's convenient. It's all in order. So then they'll just grab yeah. the keys. We have keys hanging on the racks there and they're all numbered. So they'll grab the, key, the keys that are yeah. in the repair order and, and get to work. So you know, they'll pull the car in here and the cars are heavy. So you have to 
have a, a piece of machinery that'll lift them oh, up yeah. uh, safely like and it. securely. And uh, the car comes in here and it's all centered. We had to plan out where these lifts were going to mm -hmm. be positioned. Yeah. Um, luckily for us, this building was was built for auto repair. So okay. the space in here is very well uh, calculated. Yeah. And uh, we didn't have any problems, especially with the cars we work on here. There's definitely um, some room. We don't do big trucks or anything like that. So um, you know, the, a longer vehicle um, would have a problem in here where the shorter ones don't. Right, so right, yeah. It's a lot more efficient. You're, yeah. not, you're not fixing limos in here. No, no. <laughs> no. So yeah, here's a lift. So you just have the arms that uh, go under the car and there's position points on each vehicle that uh, that uh, are made by the manufacturer that allow you to lift the car up on Oh, okay, so, so the car doesn't just like fold in half? Well, yeah, I mean, it doesn't, you know, <laughs> yeah. you don't ruin the body. Oh, okay, and, yeah. And whatnot, so. Is that, so that's like somewhere? Yeah. yeah, so like right here is a position. This is a pinch weld, they call it. And then sometimes they'll have a, a, a pad lift there. But yeah, so we get the car secured here and then you just got the controls there to uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. operate the lift up and down. And then you are basically now not just working in the business, but you're working on the business. So you're you're up here, you're in your office. What does a typical day for you look like coming yeah, in as a every, business owner? Yeah, every day I you know it's 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 nice. I mean lately it's been a little bit hectic with yeah. the new move and, and buying the new building and whatnot, but um, you know, every day I can pretty much, you know, come and go as I need mm -hmm. to and um, you know, but I get up early every day. I mean that's one of my right. things with uh, How know, early? I get up at five. Five. Yep. Oh, wow. And I'm up at five, yeah. and I'm at the gym for about an hour every right. day. And every day. Every day. Okay. Yep. There you Except go. for the weekends. I take the weekends off. But yes, I um, feel like that's a very common thing amongst like really good business owners. Mm. First of all, they're always up early. They're mm -hmm. always exercising. They're doing mm -hmm. something with their body. Um, yeah, I was complaining today about getting up at seven thirty. So, <laughs> okay, five o'clock. <laughs> yeah, so it becomes a habit. You know, yeah, just kind of create that. habits and stuff. Yeah. So, but yeah, I just do that kind. Then I come in here and you know, I go home, and then I'll. You know, take care of my kids. If yep. I need to get to school or whatever, I'll take that. You know, get that handled. If uh, uh, anything else needs to be done, I can I can mm -hmm. do pretty much whatever. I come here and then I'll spend a couple you know a couple hours in my office in the morning, kind of doing the books and yeah. making sure everything's handled. Um, you know, I still have some some tasks that I do uh, during the day. Bookkeeping is one of them, and then the marketing, mm -hmm. um, which I'm slowly handing off to oh, okay. to Ryan here. So when I can do that, it frees up more time. You yes. know, so I'm not like stuck down working on the cars yeah. anymore. I'm not stuck on the front counter right. anymore. I'm not stuck doing the marketing. You know, you're just delegating things yeah. and and as you go along, so it frees you up. So yeah, so I'm able to kind of take on big projects. You know, mm -hmm. doing this building was a big one. Oh, I was I, I was imagine. gone from the shop for four months. I mean, yeah. I check in in the morning, but. I was here every day, grinding away, getting this yeah. place ready for our move. Originally, this was a transmission shop. So they yeah. had four lifts over there, and then in here was their teardown room, which um, they did all the rebuilding of the transmissions. All the, the all the dirty work? Yeah, here. so we got in yeah. here, we just went to town. We had to clean this place <laughs> out, yeah. and we soaked the walls with with TSP and we, you know, primered and, and got mm -hmm. it cleaned up nice. So, um, you know, we didn't have like a little lunchroom area for the guys, so I kind of yeah. adapted in here as we moved in, so. Some nice little seats made from oil. Yeah, you know, like yeah. That. <laughs> Sweet, super creative. Yeah, those things, we, it took us a long time to get those. Our, yeah. <laughs> we saw them, we were down in uh, in Vegas and uh, one of the, at a car, <laughs> a car show and one of our suppliers had this at their display. I'm like, oh, we gotta yeah. get that for the show. No, I love that, yeah, I love that, yeah. definitely fits. About 10 years of selling parts and working on the cars myself, so I, yeah. you know, the internet coming along, kind of making it really challenging. I decided something had to change. Um, you know, I had no experience with working at a shop. I had no experience with mm -hmm. being a service rider. I didn't even really yeah. know what a service rider did. Um, but I, you know, got some uh, some some education, some training, um, and and started putting things to work that I was learning. And the first thing I did was I hired a master technician. Yeah. And when that happened, that, that really was a game changer for first, me. First hire then, right? And that, yeah, that wasn't my very first hire, but that yeah. was my, my first qualified like, hire. Yeah, so yeah. it was a, a guy that was very, very good at working on yeah. cars. And More I, qualified than yourself, probably? Oh, yeah. yeah. And I had no <laughs> yeah. idea anybody like that was even out there, to oh, be honest okay. with you, because uh, yeah. it blew me away. And I just saw instantly that I was going to have a totally different business model yeah. and things were going to change quickly. Well, that's great. Yeah. yeah. So so it did about 2010, I think it was. Uh, about 2010, yeah. It, it kind of yeah. went a different direction. and okay. So we were in a different location um, than we are now and than we yeah. are before. Um, but I had a smaller shop, and yeah. I think I had like two lifts or something like that. Oh, okay. and, 
Um, you know, we, we realized real quick that we were going to have to move. <laughs> That's good. That's a good problem to have. <laughs> yeah, because I was, when he, when he came in, I was working on four cars and I, I couldn't figure out some of the stuff with yeah. him and was really struggling here and there. And yeah, he right. came in and just said, give me more cars to fix. Dude, I'm like, awesome. wow, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so someone good. can take so much off of your plate. Yeah. Yeah. So that kind of started everything and getting getting you know, the business to where it's at today. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. And then eventually over time, you hired more people probably. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah, so over time, you know, that basically having him in the in the in the in the back, we call it, um, mm-hmm. freed me up to go to the front counter, which was, you know, what I was better at or felt like I was yep. better at. So when that happened, you know, I was on the front counter more, and then I, I realized I had to, you know, basically get I got the shop running to where mm-hmm. I didn't have to be out there. Yeah, the actual work itself. Yeah. yeah, with guys that I trusted that knew yeah. way more than I did, and that you know could get the jobs done yeah. right and quickly and. Um, so then I focused on the front when I, mean, I was able to get, you know, do the same thing in the front where I would replace myself and um, have somebody oh, really? that, okay. yeah. So like front desk, you're mm-hmm. speaking of. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Each technician has their own toolbox, so it's a big investment for these guys to come in and um, get involved in the industry. They have to file yeah. their own tools. And so you're saying this, all this stuff is really expensive? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so then, you know, it's a, it's a good way to keep things organized, and uh, it's all part of, of working um, as an automotive technician as being efficient. So you want to have good organization of your tools yeah. and, and be able to get to them quickly and know where things are, and uh, it just makes things go a lot better. So Nice, okay. Yeah. So uh, who's who's paying for all this stuff? Like, does every single technician is basically so their great, own person? Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's hand tools. The yeah. technician usually pays for their own hand tools. Okay. Um, there's shop tools too, like the more yeah. expensive tools like we have over here, the scan tools and the diagnostics equipment, that's this, the shop's responsibility to usually pay for that. Yeah. Any of the oil um, totes and containers and drains okay. and that kind of stuff. As yeah, well. just and some more general stuff. Shop. No no technicians paying for their own lift and stuff. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how much how awesome. much do these cost by the way? Like I'm just curious. Oh, they're probably around thirty five hundred bucks each. Thirty five hundred? Like that, oh, so. okay. Not thirty five thousand? Oh no. no. Okay. No, no, that's no, not no, too no. bad. No. I mean it's definitely, I mean, it, it probably gets up there. Yeah. Um, plus, once you count the install, when we moved over here, I had to hire a company to yeah. come in and do this the install. Is not the most simple thing. I mean, we could do it, but it's not something you want to mess with. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want your cars dropping from 10 yeah, feet up. It's a, lot of, a lot of responsibility. You know. Honestly, in our industry, I wouldn't say there's a ton of technicians yeah. looking for work because, a, and honestly, my, my thing I always say is funny is uh, the good ones are always working. So yeah. Yeah. What, what, what really helps a shop owner or a business owner is if you have your business in order and you have things in place, you have systems in place, uh, that attracts good people. You know, they want to work for people that are organized. They want to work for people that are productive. So, you know, as your reputation grows, it just kind of perpetuates itself and they know who you are. So. Uh, but you know, usually, usually the good ones are working. So there's a lot of crazy tactics nowadays that shop owners have to yeah, take to to, to get people. You know, people, right? yeah, you know, it's, like yeah. You know, once in a while, you know, you got to do what you got to do. But that's uh, that's how that's how it goes. But you know, luckily for us, I don't have a high turnover. Um, yeah. Most of my guys have been with me for oh, several okay. years now. So, but that's just the key. You know, you just got to make sure that you attract. That you can attract people. Hired first of all your master's technician, and I'm guessing there's more than one now. Yeah, um, three. Yeah. What's the training look like for them? Like, do they have to go through something? Yes, yeah, so ideally, you know, there's a there's, there's a process for them as uh-huh. well. Um, you know, when I'm when I'm looking at a new hire for a technician, yeah. you know, I, I I like to see that they've gone to at least two years of school. Um, okay. And then honestly, it's it's good for guys to have training. Um, you know, in a Probably not, not the best environment, but mm-hmm. a real structured environment like the dealership or something yeah. like that. Oh, so if yeah. somebody's been at the dealer for a couple of years and they've Experience, got a two-year, de- right. two-year degree, then we can yeah. we can work with that. So you have an open floor shop, right? The people are interacting with each other, the employees all the time. Mm-hmm. Does uh, attitude or mindset, like when you're when when you're going through the hiring process, does that play a big role as well? Oh or yeah. Or is it more mostly just like your technical skills? What would you say? Well, yeah. I mean, it's you know in our industry, it's really hard to find qualified technicians. Yeah. So. Um, you know, attitude is, is a big part because yeah, you're spending eight hours a day together yeah, and, you right. know, and then, and honestly, it's not the easiest work in the world because, sure. you know, the cars are complicated yeah. and it can get frustrating sometimes. So, <laughs> tree, tree here so you know, you're going to, you're going to be yeah. human, you're going to be a human being once in a while. Uh, yeah, sure. But, but yeah, it's, it's really important to have, uh, you know, outgoing people that are, that are happy and, sure. and get along yeah. and, and can work well together. That's, that's very, very important. Yeah.
like I said, there's a lot of tools we have to buy as owners. So like all these specialty tools. Yeah. Um, they're, you know, every, it seems like every engine has its own tool. So oh, right. Like here's a lot of specialty hand tools, you know, like the techs aren't gonna buy these necessarily because we don't use them all the time. Uh, yeah, to be honest, I, I don't think I've seen any of these tools ever. Yeah. Because they look very special to me. Yeah, and not every shop has yeah. every tool too. You know, I think, you know, it's a uh, good thing about our industry too, is if you're if you're on good terms with most other shops, yeah. you can help each other out and oh, okay. each yeah. other tools. And, is there stuff we don't have that we need once in a while? There's stuff that yeah. other shops have that, that you probably have to like, we, or don't have that we have. Order it from like Bosnia or something, where it's Some like, stuff, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of, a lot of stuff that goes into it, and it's always yeah. changing. But that's one of the good things about being specialized um, uh -huh. in the European cars. We have a yeah. better handle on that, and we're also sure. more efficient when we work on yeah. vehicles. But we're able to have the tools ready to go. So it's like them, so. important that you guess found your like your niche, right? Yeah, yeah, because okay. if you have a, like a, what we call a general repair yeah. shop where you're working on everything, yeah. I mean, you're buying tools every day. For right? sure. You know, it's just, like, it gets really expensive for yeah. the owner. And, Here you have like the, everything yeah. specific cut out for each car, yeah. love it, okay. We've been talking about the auto industry most of this video. Mm -hmm. um, to the people at home that have nothing to do with cars, but they're, they want to become a business owner, doesn't matter what it may be, you know, um, there's a big, there's a really big difference between an employee and a business owner. Yeah. What is that difference? You know, what do they need to do? What kind of person do they need to become? Yeah, you basically, you know, you have to take the mindset that you're going to do whatever it takes to be successful. You know, it's yep. uh, it, a lot of businesses fail early on and it's just one of those things that, uh, you know, when you realize that, that it's, nothing's going to be given to you, that you have to work super hard, twice as hard as anybody else, that, uh, you know, you got to mm -hmm. just basically do whatever it's, it takes to, to get to the next level. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's what it takes. You, know, you just have to have the mindset going in every day that you're, you're, you know, you're here for your employees, you're here for your customers, and you're here to make it happen, you know. Um, a good motivation, right. a good motivating factor, you know, for me was my family and being able to, you know, support them doing this and, and being yeah. self, uh, self-sufficient and self-employed, so. Just yeah, kind I'm of sure. finding that fire every day. Yeah, you know? I'm sure your family appreciates that. When you need to take some time or an emergency happens, you can, you know, you can take off the time of work, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. it's it's nice to be able to just kind of come and go. And That's once great. things are set yeah. up and, and operational, they call it, and you know, you're yeah. you're free to go. So yeah, I love that. What what steps do you take? For example, let's say you're kind of running low, business is just out of slow season. Is there some sort of like outreach, some sort of technique, I don't know, someone could use to like, what do you, you know, send out cards or something like? There's things we can do, you know, based off what we, what we see, like last week we had a slow week. So let's, let's send out an email blast or let's send out a, you know, um, some, some postcards or something like that. But, um, you know, that's the number one rule is when it's, when it's slow, you got to promote. So you got to get out there and do whatever it takes, whether it's picking up the phone and, and calling customers you haven't heard from for a while. Or like I said, doing an email blast or you know, doing some social media stuff. But uh, you know, marketing is funny in this business. It's not like there's a magic pill for one thing. I mean, you have to basically do it all. You know, if you want oh, to stay busy. Yeah. So Just be in front of everybody at the same time. Yeah, like you can't. Yeah, I mean, marketing's changed quite a yeah, bit. You know, we sure. used to always only do print and that kind of thing, and now yeah. things are more digital. But you don't ever want to, like I found, go away from from the old ways either. Yeah. You know, I tried that at sure. one, one point and it wasn't successful. I mean, so. especially one to one interaction. A lot of people are just like lacking in that now, just because they see the digital world is expanding and that's the possibility that they stop talking to, they stop calling their customers just because they know that they're constantly being put in front of them, and then that loses, you mm -hmm. know, the interaction, and then your customers just stop coming. And like I said, I at one point thought that it was the time to, to pull out all of my, what maybe it's basically the printed portion of our marketing and that was not the right thing to do, right. you know, and I noticed a, a, a dip in, in, in sales and whatnot. So I made sure that, you know, every year going forward that we have a plan for marketing and that we still implement the things that work. Because if something works, you know, why change it? You know? Yeah, exactly. So. Why do you think the shop's so successful? I mean, I attribute our success to my employees. I mean, yeah. they're, you know, you got to have the right people in place. Yeah. You know, not so only, teams. yeah, somebody that can, you know, like with it, fixing the cars, that's able to fix the cars yeah. better than me, but also it's, you know, just that they have a good flow, a good, a good continuity with each other. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then people that, uh, you know, that are that are trained properly, that can get the job done that needs to get right, done. Right. So, 
Um, but just us being, you know, transparent with with our customers has really helped mm-hmm. uh, us be successful. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that's the big thing. Our industry is pretty challenged with uh, with that. You know, a lot of people don't don't necessarily trust the shops that they have to take their cars to. So for sure, yeah. For us so to be much able horror to stories about that. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, for us to be able to just be honest and transparent and and just uh, yeah. let them know what they can expect, it, it really is has gone a long way, and it just it compounds itself. Yeah. So, but you know, having a successful business takes time. You know, you have to put in your put in your 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 time and and get uh, your reputation built up and you know repeat customers are big so you gotta make sure you take care of them and yeah. but it all just kind of perpetuates itself so it's like retention right you want those customers to come, be coming back to you after five years if their you know repair goes wrong or something if possible yeah. yeah yeah so you go out of your way to make sure that you know the money they spend with you is is, is well spent you know it may be a little bit more expensive but um, you know then there's always somebody that can do it cheaper but you know we have a, a warranty that backs all of our yeah. work and and we've been able to really build a lot of confidence in the community with uh, with things yeah. like that. What I'd recommend for you know an employee or a, a technician yeah. that wants to have his own shop, which is the majority of people that get into this business mm-hmm. are technicians themselves. Um, mm-hmm. My situation is a little bit different, mm-hmm. um, but the majority of them are technicians, so they'll. They'll they'll see they'll be in that environment working for somebody else and they'll want what the owner has or they'll you know think that oh, it's you know yeah. it's 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 much better and much greener. Um, they'll get into it without the skills that it takes to run the business mm-hmm. and that's the side of things okay. that they don't understand. Yeah. They can fix cars really well, yeah. but they can't fix their business really yeah, well. They so. can't talk to clients, right? They can't do sales. They might be pretty good at talking to clients, but yeah. just the overall business because there's there's a lot more that goes into it than that as well. It's just you know creating a, a good. Uh, a good flow for your customers to bring their cars in and out mm-hmm. and, and, and consistency and, and repairs okay. done right. You yeah. know, so that's really, really important. So, um, you know, they may be really good at fixing cars, but then, you know, they're not very good at getting things done on time or they're not really good at, you know, their finances and they're having financial problems and yeah. that kind of stuff. So my, my, my recommendation to any shop owner that, uh, that wants to, or any, uh, technician that wants to become a shop owner is to, you have to basically switch gears completely, mm-hmm. which is really hard to do. Um, but you have to get, you know, training and education on how to run a shop, you know, cause there's a lot more to it than yeah. just fixing cars. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I know I enjoyed it. I've never been in an auto shop myself, so um, this was super cool for me. Got to learn a lot about what it takes to be a business owner. This guy's super disciplined, as you can tell, just his way of speaking, he's super smart. Um, if you guys have any suggestions for what businesses we should um, interview, leave them in the comments below. We really wanna see you guys be commenting. We're trying to get more feedback because this, these videos are for you guys. They're not for us.